Okay, this is the repairs video for my 2002 Chevy 2500. In this video, I got a small exhaust leak in the driver's side manifold. The passenger one's replaced, so we're going to do the uh, driver's side manifold bolts. Um, there's a linkage on the transmission that fell off, um, which if you watched my other video, you would know about that. So we're just going to put that back on somehow. And um, the main part is we're just going to be taking all this rust off the frame because it's got a little scaling happening here. Nothing goes through. It's all just scaling. So it's not uh, all the way through yet because these guys have huge like half inch thick steel frames. They're the 2500 frames on here. Take a look at that. It's beefy. So surface rust really isn't that big of a deal. But it is. it should be taken care of. And uh, up here it's in much better shape than back there. So that's why I got it. I'm starting back here because it's a little worse. So I'm just going to start by removing the spare tire under here. Oh, jeez. All right, now that we got this rusty paint in the butt out of the way, we can actually get to some rust removal. So here we go. First, let me, I'll just show you guys the underside so that you can see it before and after. It's not terrible. It's not great. Um, it's obviously New England rust. See this cakey stuff on here? A little cakey stuff. This will all come off with my sander. Uh, here's this frame rail. You know. It's got some cakey stuff. So there it is. And if you guys are wondering if you've seen the video, I'm wearing goggles instead of safety glasses. It's because safety glasses fog up when you wear a mask and goggles don't. It's not because I'm a super stylish guy. Hopefully this is a good enough angle for you peoples. Take a look at how effective this uh, air hammer is. It's pretty awesome. So all of this is just caked on, all this rust here caked on. Just like a little hit from the hammer. I mean, it just makes quick work of it. We still got to do a little more on that, but it's just really effective. So as you're uh, sanding away at the frame or chipping away at the frame, sometimes I come across these little white spots and I say, wow, I'm finally reaching bare metal. But then <laughs> you look closer, no, it's actually just salt deposits. So that is why these things rot away in New England. The salt gets them good. I'm done with the back back here. Got all the scaly stuff off. Next, I'm gonna coat the back with uh, fluid film and uh, maybe give it a coat of paint. But first, let's get the side done. So most of the of the rust was in the back area. If you take a look up front, here, let me take my camera off. Obviously the rockers have been replaced and they were not replaced super professionally, but that wasn't me. If you look up front here, this is actually a lot less bad in the back. Yes, it's still got surface rust, but it's not starting to scale as much. So this I might just take a little wire brush to, sand it down with the wire brush, and then just coat it. That should protect it for a couple of years at least. But we are getting there. We're gonna make this a sharp looking truck. I mean, it already looks pretty damn sharp, but 
It's gonna look even sharper with a nice black frame. So I'm gonna pick up this uh, rust proofing tomorrow. Right now I'm gonna go in and eat a couple burgers. Before we get into this undercoating, I wanna mention thank you for everybody who commented suggestions. Wow, look at all these ants here. That's how you know it's spring. Anyway, thank you for all those who suggested things to do to the frame to undercoat it. I had a lot of suggestions for bar chain oil, many things. Uh, a YouTuber called 802 Garage was super helpful. He sent me a, a bunch of links and everything to it. Unfortunately, the thing is, by the time I had made that video, I'd already also bought the fluid film to put on this frame, and I didn't want to spend more money to do all the other stuff. But thank you a bunch, because in the future, I'll be using those tips on undercoating my cars. Uh, so thank you to all those who commented. Now let's get started undercoating this. Clean it up a little bit with this wire brush and uh, then we'll get the front and then I'll start undercoating it with the fluid film. Um, here's what I got is this fluid film protection. Put it in this spray gun here and uh, connected to my air compressor and we'll start spraying the back of the frame and then since it's not really a nice color it's kind of a mustardy color I'm just gonna once I do that then I'll uh, spray over that with some black oil based paint as well well I made it through the first uh, bottle I'll hook up the second one, keep going. I'm through two uh, of the four containers of these things. So you can see, this is why, why I'm gonna cover it in black because I don't like this mustardy color that it gives off there. I'm sorry this camera's quality isn't the best, guys. I'm having troubles with my other phone. Underneath, you can see I got all the important stuff down here. I'll show you a little more later too, but I got the frame rails, the cross members, all that stuff. And we're just gonna keep, keep at it. So I'm on my last uh, bottle now. I'm going to finish up by getting, as you can see, I've got pretty much all the frame. I'm going to finish up by getting the front stuff up here. I've gotten a little bit, but uh, it's pretty important to get up here because it rusts a lot by the front suspension mounts up here as well. I think up front there and then by the back rear suspension mounts are the most notorious rust spots on these trucks, but I'm not 100% sure on that, especially near the front clip. And uh, then we'll be finished up and then I'll head, head down to the store and buy some maybe some black rust-oleum to spray over that stuff. Used it all and I got all the frame luckily, so you guys can maybe see. I know the quality on this camera is bad and I will get a better quality camera in a minute to show you better, but uh, Got the whole frame pretty much sprayed down. Inner rails, outer rails, front clips, the cross members. And I got the inner rocker panels too. And uh, so all these holes here in the frame, it was recommended that you spray fluid film in all the holes, so I did that as well. Sprayed it inside of the cross members, so. Uh, hopefully it's all good. This fluid film is advertised that it's gonna, that it'll stop rust on impact, so I, Hopefully they stand true to their claim. I've heard a lot of good reviews from them. And hopefully the frame on this rust, or the, the rust on this frame stops. And uh, we get many years out of this beautiful long bit Chevy. So I went to the store and here's what I got. This is just uh, rust stop black paint. So I'm gonna put this over the, uh, the fluid film because I think that'll look nicer. And I'm just gonna show you the final product. I don't wanna show you me applying it all because I think this video is gonna run long anyway. Well guys, I pretty much finished with the uh, the paint and I gotta say, it looks really good. Look at this nice black frame. It's 
go all the way around. And then I'll show you underneath. I didn't skip out on any spots, so this is 100% covered in fluid film. And then over the fluid film is the coat of that Rust-Oleum. Let's get underneath. Just take a look at the difference. Ugh. Axle's all painted. So to reiterate what I did was uh, it was first with the air hammer. I took off all the scales and then I went with the wire brush and with the wire brush I took off all the little surface rust areas and then fluid film and rust oleum and that was what I did. You guys can say in the comments whether you have better methods although a lot of people said in the last video already. Anyway, I'm pretty, I'm actually very happy with how clean and rust free it's looking under here and I'm confident that this truck this truck's frame at least has many years ahead of it now there it is uh, the only thing I still got to do is I'm gonna back it up and then get the front more because I only got the front sides and or the, the sides of the front I wasn't able to get the bottom yet since I'm uh, since the pit isn't long enough, but I'll finish that up and then that's going to be it. There's our beautiful rust free frame though. All right, just going to get the front now, I'll show you how I do it. Although that's pretty self explanatory. And no, I did not fluid film the control arms. I didn't have enough for the control arms, unfortunately, but these are thick metal. I, I'm confident in them. Anyway, that's all I do. And now the front is done as well, guys. It's going to be it for the uh, frame on this truck, I think. Just want to take a moment to shout out a few channels that I really like to watch. The first one is Old Car Auto Guy. This guy is Jason. He's got a really cool old square body. He's got some other cool projects. I think you guys really enjoy it. And he makes quality content and uploads uh, oftentimes several times a week so go check him out I will link in in the description below and the reason I want to uh, shout these guys out is because what really gets on my nerves is there's guys like Scotty Kilmer who really doesn't know what he's talking about has an annoying voice is just an annoying personality and he has millions of subscribers and he's basically pumping people full of false information which pisses me off overall I think he's going a little crazy and he just doesn't know what he's talking about anymore and honestly, I don't think he knows very much about cars. Yes, he's been a mechanic for 50 years, but he doesn't, he's not like a real mechanic. He's more of a internet personality mechanic. So he had a show, he's got a YouTube channel now. He, I think he had a radio show too. Basically what he does is not uh, real work on cars. It's just uh, for entertainment. Honestly, I really don't like that channel. And I think that uh, Jay Smart, an old car auto guy, 802 Garage, Zip Ties and Buy Supplies, uh, D-Boss Garage is also one of my favorites. These guys actually know what they're talking about. Um, they're pretty unbiased. Well, Zip Ties is obviously biased towards Fords, but he's a great guy anyway. Anyway, back to work on the truck. And if you guys do like Scotty Kilmer, that's okay. Please don't unsubscribe from me for saying that. That's just my opinion. Okay, next up is I bought five of these marker lights for my Silverado. I, they were super duper cheap on eBay. It was $13.99 for all of them. Unfortunately, that means they didn't really come with anything, so all they, all they came in with was this. No wiring harness, no hardware to install it or anything, so I'm going to have to do some wiring. I played around with it a little bit with my uh, battery here just to find out, you know, how you have to give it power. Uh, maybe it's this way, actually. Yeah, because black is always ground. So... We're going to have to figure out how to mount it, but uh, I'm just going to try to wire it into the, maybe tap into the fuse box so every time you turn on the lights, these also will come on. I don't really know yet, but the first thing I'm going to do is just extend these wires longer because they seem like they're way too short. Uh, unfortunately, my electrical kit is very limited at this moment and all the stores are closed, so what I'm going to be doing to put them together, and I know you guys won't like this, but I'm just going to twist them and put electrical tape on it. That's... Uh, Really not, there's really not many options around right now, and maybe I'll fix it once the stores open back up. So 
So I wired them all up pretty much like this. All you electricians might get on my tail for this, but uh, extended the wires, just twisted them up so they don't fall apart, kind of taped them around. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to connect these all together and tap into a fuse. So basically these lights are called marker lights and they're generally on 2500, so I don't know. I'm not sure why they weren't on this one. Um, sometimes they're federally mandated if a truck is too big just to mark it. As you can see, this 2500 has it, and I think that it really makes this truck look a lot cooler with it. So I want to add it to the other 2500, and I think that'll look... It'll make it look more like a big truck, which is what I want. I'll do some measuring now. So this is the general placement I have them at. I think it looks fine like that. Now I gotta take down the headliner so I can access the wires up in here. So that's about all the access I need under the, under the headliner. Let's go ahead and start installing these lights. Okay, well here we go guys. I'm going to start installing it now. Well, there they are. Let me know what you think in the comments. Gimmicky or cooler? I think it's cooler. Just because it makes it look like a, uh, a bigger and real truck. Especially since other 2500s have it and I felt kind of... felt like my truck was naked without it. Well guys, that's going to be the end of this video. It's running a bit long. I think I'll do the exhaust manifold in another video. Thanks for watching.